Hey guys, it's Mr. Zigner again, lesson 1-9, and we're looking at arithmetic sequences today. All right, so we're going to look at our main idea and some vocabulary. We're going to look at describing and extending our sequences. So again, the main idea is to describe these relationships and extend terms in arithmetic sequences. So in other words, describing what's going on in the sequence and also picking what the next numbers would be in that sequence. Vocab that we'll be defining in our glossary include sequence, term, and arithmetic sequence. So here's the first one. We're going to describe the relationship between the terms in this arithmetic sequence. So we have 7, 11, 15, 19. Then we have to figure out the next three terms in the sequence. Well, as you can see a little bit further down, it looks like they are adding 4 each time. So we're just going to keep on adding 4. 19, the last number right here, plus 4 would be 23. Then 23 plus 4 is 27. And finally, 27 plus 4 is 31. So the next three terms are 23, 27, and 31. So terms are just numbers in a sequence. Another thing that is going to pop up is which term is it? So since 7 was the first number, it's the first term. The 11 was the second term. 15 would be the third term. 19 would be the fourth term. So down here, 23 would be the fifth. 27 is the sixth. And 31 is the seventh term. All right, so what kind of relationship do we have going on here? We start with 13, then go to 24, 35, and 46. And then we have to write the next three terms. My favorite way to figure this out is just to take any two numbers. So I'm just going to take the 24 and the 13. And I'm going to subtract to see the difference. So 4 minus 3 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. So right here, it looks like it's going up 11 each time. Now I'm just going to pick any other two. How about the last two? So 46 and the 35 right before it. And yep, that's 11 also. So there it is. We're increasing by 11, adding 11 each time. And then let's see, 46 plus 11, well, that'd be 57 plus 11 would be 68, plus 11 would be 79. So I'm sure you can see the answer over here already. That would be B. All right, moving on. Now, I think the only thing I see different here is that we have decimals. So describe the relationship between the terms in this sequence, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 1 1.3, and what are the next three terms? Well, looks like we're adding 0.4 each time. So we're going to keep on adding 0 0.4. 1.3 1 plus 0.4 is 1.7. Plus 0.4 is 2.1. Plus 0.4 is 2.5. Okay, I think we've got the idea. So what's the relationship in the sequence we have here, in this arithmetic sequence? 0 0.6, 1.5, 2.4, 3.3. .3. So again, I'm just going to grab two of the numbers. I think I'll take the middle two numbers this time. It doesn't really matter which ones. I'm going to subtract the 1.5. Let's see, a little bit of regrouping here. So that would be a 14. This would become a 1. So 14 minus 5 is 9. Bring my decimal straight down. 1 minus 1 is 0. So it looks like it's increasing by 0 0.9 each time. I'm just going to verify that real quick. Pick another set of numbers. How about 1.5 and the 0 0.6? just want to make sure. Again, my regrouping. So this would be 15. This would be 0. 15 minus 6. Yep, that's 9. 0 minus 0 is 0. So yes, we're definitely increasing by 0 0.9. So it looks like the answer is D, but let's just make sure. Take that last number, 3.3. And we're going to add our 0 0.9. And 9 plus 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Bring my decimal straight down. And yeah, we can keep going with this, but it's pretty clear that the answer is D. If you add 0.9 to 4.2, 4.2 to 
you're definitely going to get 5.1. And then if you add 0.9 to 5.1, you're going to get that 6 or 6.0. Okay, now another thing you're going to see, we're going to be making tables with these values. This is actually leading to working with uh, linear equations. That's going to be something coming up later, but they're sort of preparing us for it now with this real life or real world example. So we're starting a new exercise routine. First we did two sit-ups, after that you do two more than the previous day. If you continue this pattern, how many will you have done on the tenth day? Well, you can see I made a little box here. We're going to look underneath that in a minute so on I was talking about this earlier these are the terms oh I'm sorry I'm sorry it's already over here these are the terms and this is the place in the term on the other side so these are the terms and this is its position of course that's already written so I guess I just wasted my time there okay let's just get into this so on the first day, on the first day right here, he did two. That's what it says up top. He did, he did two, where is it? He did two sit-ups on the first day. Okay. So on the second day, he does two more than the previous day. Okay. So on the second day, he did four, and it, that just keeps on going. On the third day, he did six. Let me have a little rule for us. N... The position would be n, so what, that's the day, and that's right here. And the value would be 2n. Do you see why they said 2n? Because each time you move from a position to a number of sit-ups, you simply multiply the day or the position times 2. So first you do 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 3 times 2. So really, we're doing n times 2. But, of course, the right way to write that is to put the coefficient first, that's the 2, followed by the variable. Okay. So let's figure out what the 10th day would be. Well, since each term is 2 times the position number, you just use 2n, like we had on the previous slide, and 2 times 10, the 10th day, would be 20. So on the 10th day, you're doing 20 sit-ups. All right, one for us to do. The first row of a theater has eight seats. Each additional row has eight more seats than the previous row. If this pattern continues, what expression can be used to find the number of seats in the 15th row? How many seats will be in the 15th row? Wow, I don't know if I want to make a list all the way out to 15 rows, but maybe we can find the pattern here and solve it pretty quickly. I think I'm going to just jot down some of the numbers. So the first row had... Um, eight seats right there and now the second row had what did they say eight more seats than the previous row okay so eight more than eight would be 16 so again this is the row and this is the number of seats kind of have like a little table thing going on here so I guess in the third row we'd have eight more so eight more than 16 is 24 and um, that might be enough. Let's do one more. Fourth row, eight more than that would be 32. Fifth row would be eight more than 32. That's 40. Okay, maybe that's enough to figure out the rule. So how do you move from the row to the seat number? And it's got to be the same rule each time. What can we do to this, to this five to get 40? And then I knew I want to do the same thing to the three and get 24. Do you see it over here in one of these rules? Have you picked it out yet? It's A. Looks like the answer is definitely A. Are you seeing it? If not, here, listen to this. If you multiply three times eight, you get 24. Five times eight is 40. One times eight is eight. So it looks like we multiply the row number, I guess that would have been the n, by 8. So 8 times the row number, that's going to equal the number of, I'll just throw another variable over here, the number of seats. Maybe an r would have been good here. 8 times r, 8 times the number of rows equals the number of seats. 
course, they used an N. That's okay. And, of course, you can already see the answer is 120, but let's just do the work real quick. So 8 times the, uh, what was it supposed to be? The 15th, oh, there it is, the 15th row. I lost that. So 15 times 8, well, 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. So there it is, yeah, 120 seats. Oh, look at that. We're all done. So that's all, folks. Please check out the questions below the video. And if you need to re-listen to, again, review what a term is, um, do check that out. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.